Good evening. Today is Tuesday, December 13th. Um, the time is uh, just after 6.15. Uh, welcome to the Athletics, Arts, Music, and Extracurricular Activities Subcommittee meeting. Um, before we conduct this meeting, we'd like to establish a quorum. Kathy Ellis? Here. Cynthia? Here. Jared? Here. Tony Rodriguez present. Also, we have Superintendent Mr. Thomas here with us today. Um, today's uh, agenda is just to get an update from our athletics department, our arts department, music department. We have respective guests, uh, Nick Lee, Math Matthew Campbell, Sarah Richards, and Rebecca Desmond. And uh, I believe Mr. Cable will not be with us at this time. Uh, there's a function going on at the high school with the girls' basketball game this evening. Um, we're going to reverse the role from last time where we had athletics stop first and kind of took up a little bit of time. But uh, actually, Mr. Carroll, Mr. Carroll is in attendance. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm late. We had not, uh, girls, girls' basketball. Oh, nice. Um, I'd like to, if Sarah Richards can uh, come to the uh, makeshift podium and give us an update on our arts department and what's going on. Yeah, we did that. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, the art department's having a good year. Um, we just are getting into um, kind of award seasons with the high school. We sent off 88 entries to the Scholastic Art Awards um, last week. We sent 75 entries to the UMass Dartmouth Emerging Young Artists. So that's what's been happening at the high school. Um, you know, the elementaries and the middle schools are really back in the groove after the pandemic. You know, we're back really producing art, um, reading, writing, and speaking about art. And um, as I've been going around, I've been really pleased with what I've been seeing in the classrooms. Um, last time we were here, we talked about lighting and sound for the auditorium. That has lots of progress there. The bids went out, the bids were awarded to Boston Light and Sound and Barbizon through all of you. And um, now it's in Dr. Cobb's and Carl Walker's hands, and I believe it's moving forward. So we're excited about that um, to get that done. Um, the TV studio upgrade I've been working on. Um, we had a big installation in August. Um, it's about 80% done. We had back orders. Things have just been back ordered. So I just met with a company uh, last week. And um, it looks like February vacation, they'll be able to come in and um, finish that, um, finish that install. Um, the only thing left would be we have a couple robo cameras that are going in the balcony. So we need to get some ethernet run to them so that we can just, um, you know, broadcast right out of the auditorium for any event. Um, it'll be much easier than, you know, Mr. Halko now setting everything up and taking everything down. And it'll be great to work with the BCA because um, they'll be able to use it too. And our, it'll be great for our kids to film things. Um, the other project I'm working on right now with John Messia from the mayor's office is they're doing some artwork for under the bridges downtown. Um, so we're going to have the two photo teachers are going to work with some kids to get some photos um, of around Brockton um, for that project. Um, I'll work with him more. We just started talking about it last week, so I'll work with him more, and um, we can maybe present that to you later, but I think that's going to be very fun. And um, the teachers are very excited about it, and they'll roll it out to the kids right after Christmas. Um, and the other, actually, photo project we're working on in collaboration with um, the health department and Dennis Genich is a photo voices. Um, it's an after school club. They meet on Tuesdays at the high school and um, they take photographs and it, it's based on uh, gambling and it's through the spring house and um, it's a, a health grant. So um, we have our kids doing that and they're really excited about it. So that's kind of what's happening in the art department. open up the floor to the members for if anybody has any questions. Uh, I'm sorry, always me. Um, what is photo voices? I'm sorry, I just don't understand. So now I wish Dennis was here. <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, photo voices, it's, they're working with um, the Spring House and they, they teach kids about gambling and a gambling problem. It's, it's a, it's a um, grant that's coming through the health department, but they work with students and they take photographs. And it's a great program. They come down and they um, 
they teach them all about you know the dangers of gambling but then the kids have to do all these photos but it's community kind of based photography okay and um, we did it before the pandemic and it was great and then we had a couple years we didn't get it going so it's good to have it back again this year great and the, and the yeah. state has put money towards this grant because of the approval of sports betting yeah and that's what i was wondering of, if it was tied part to of that, that bill yeah. that had that pumped more money into this for because obviously yes you're going to have more and kids will have access to, I mean, not legally, but... Of course. <laughs> yeah, and it is no. Dennis's baby. It is. Yeah. Um, one of my photo teachers pairs up with him, so it's a great collaboration, but it, it is his baby, not mine. No, that's great. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. I just didn't... I'm like, photo voices sounds like an oxymoron, and I wondered how it connected, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Any other members with any questions? Mr. Stone? Just, just in terms of the... Art competitions that you mentioned too, yeah. are those available only for the, is that only the high school students that are participating? Those are high school students, right. yeah. Do, do the middle school students or anybody participate in any kind of other, is there any other art showcase or anything like that? that uh, just internal stuff, okay. not, not external. Um, we're always kind of looking for more external competitions to, to compete in. Okay. Um, but no, middle school is mainly in, you know, within Brockton Public Schools mm -hmm. we have participate in a lot of things and okay. they win prizes that way. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? I have a question on the uh, doing the under the bridges. Yeah. Is that going to be a seasonal type of project, or is that going to be year round with the weather? I mean, how is that supposed to transpire? It's year round. John Messi has been working on it, and um, it's actually metal. Um, it's like a zigzag metal structure that goes under the bridge and then when you drive from one way you see one photograph and then when you drive from the other way you see another photograph that's so, really cool you know we're, we'll brainstorm with the kids things around brockton like maybe there's a picture of dw field or maybe there's a picture of a whole bunch of students faces and we're gonna try to do things with that represent you know young kids high school kids but even elderly populations you know so we can get everybody in there that's what we're trying to come up with so we'll come up with um, you know, 20 or 30 photographs, and we will send them to John Messier in the mayor's office, and they will pick what they're going to do. Um, but they're permanent structures, and they get printed on the metal. Nice. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, I have no further questions. If anybody wants to close up, any other questions, follow-ups? Nobody? I'd like to thank you for your time, yeah, giving us an course. update with the department, and it's nice to see the uh, students' um, artwork being showcased. Um, I was one of those students, so... Thank you. Well, thank you for the support. All right, thank, you. thank you. Next, I would like to call Ms. Rebecca Desmond, and she will give us an update on the music department. <laughs> I hope you're singing. No. <laughs> Where's I the concert? Hear anything. <laughs> you have to tell me that ahead. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Rebecca Desmond. I'm the new interim director of music. Um, I started in mid-October, so I'm still kind of wrapping my brain around everything. Um, we have um, several of our students from Brockton High School who are participating in the Senior District Festival coming up in January. They auditioned back in November, um, and then we recently had our students grade seven, eight, and nine who auditioned for Junior District and um, we had several students who were selected to perf perform in those ensembles, and that's coming up in um, March. I believe it's the second weekend of March, March 10th and 11th. Um, we also have a lot of our high school students who received Allstate recommendations, so they will go and um, audition to be part of the Allstate um, choirs, band, orchestra, and um, that is the end of January. Um, so those are a couple of the competitions that our students are doing. Uh, we just finished our marching band season, um, and I know a, a lot of people really enjoyed the show that they did this year um, and everything like that. A lot of great comments from people who are not Brockton residents, um, people who saw the band at games and who um, commended the band on the atmosphere um, that they were able to bring. Um, we are currently working on a new curriculum in the music department, um, working towards um, a curriculum that has our students performing more in general music classes and providing those opportunities to create um, and really engage with music in ways um, that is beneficial to every student. Um, so we're uh, looking into all of our um, uh, 
inventories at our schools. We have a lot of older instruments, a lot of damaged instruments, um, and looking into ways to replace um, a lot of those, looking to get more instruments into our general music classrooms at the middle school level. We don't really have a lot. Um, some schools have ukuleles, some, some schools have buckets for drumming, um, but it's, there's no equity around what we have in different schools, so trying to bring in instruments to all of them. Um, and then we are also looking into purchasing new marching percussion instruments for our marching band. Um, I think the ones that we currently have are about 20 years old. Um, and we would like to not only replace them, but also um, provide for our percussionists stands for those drums so that when they're practicing inside, they don't have to wear them the entire time. Um, they're heavy. <laughs> If you've ever hold, held a marching percussion instrument, um, but that's what I have. Thank you. Um, any questions from any of the members, Mrs. Ellis? <laughs> Again, hey. Um, out of all the things that we need in the music department, and you're a fresh set of eyes, and so there's great value in having somebody new come in and be able to look around and say, you know, not whether something's right or wrong or what should be a focus. Out of all the things that you mentioned, what do you think are the highest, the top three highest priorities for this coming year? Uh, I think uh, marching percussion. A lot of those instruments are breaking, um, and being with how um, visible the marching band is and how often we travel um, and perform at different things, that is something that needs to be uh, replaced. And we've been working on quotes for that um, for a couple of years now. Uh, we just haven't been able to really get anything done because um, COVID. Yep. Um, the elementary instruments are in dire need. Um, teachers have been replacing um, the tubing on them and the pegs on them to the best of their ability, sometimes spending their own money. Um, but there's, uh, on the ORF instruments, the bars that are on them, many of the bars are lost, broken, um, and they're just, they're getting to a point where they're beyond repair. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last bit would be the middle schools. And um, for middle schools, I would really like to be able to find what teachers are going to be able to deliver best to their students and make sure that they have those, um, those opportunities available for them. I'm really impressed with um, the fact that you, I'm impressed and pleased that you included the elementary and the middle schools. Because when we think of music, we're always thinking about the marching band at the high school. We're always thinking about who are the most obvious that you picture as, you know, in music. And so I love the idea that you're truly looking at elementary and middle school as well so we can bring those folks up into the high school. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Any other members with questions? Sorry. Yeah. When you talk about um, you know different styles of music, how do we incorporate different cultures into our music department, knowing that we're very diverse? Mm. Um, and that is, I think, as music teachers, we, we we have the ability to do that. I think easier than a lot of um, a lot of other curriculum at the time. Um, there are a lot of really great resources. There's one that I found recently that's um, it's called Musician of the Month Project. And it is a, um, it's an organization and they feature, uh, their whole idea is to feature non-Eurocentric um, composers and world musicians and things like that. Um, I think it's really important to figure out within each school um, how do, how is what we're teaching in the classroom representative of the students in front of us? And I think that that changes for each teacher in each one of our buildings. Um, but then how do we also provide opportunities for students to experience music um, that they may not necessarily experience? And that's one of the things that we're talking about with the curriculum. Um, one of the parts of our curriculum has to do with music and culture and bringing in um, music that not only students can see themselves in, but also music that gives them windows into other cultures so that they can experience more throughout the world. Um, that, as much as and I'm, a, I'm a classical pianist, but classical music can be boring <laughs> and tired, and depending on how it's being delivered, it's not interesting to our students. So I think that's one of the things that we're doing with the curriculum, and it's one of the things that I think is most important to our classrooms here. Thank you. Now, when you talk about, um, you know, needing equipment, um, something to fall, have you come up with a, 
a budget of how much it's going to cost, what you need overall? Uh, I have like a very, um, it's not an exact budget, but I did, I, I looked up a couple different things um, before I came tonight. I can share them if you'd like. Yes, okay. yes, this is the governing, sure. part of the governing body of the school department. I will ask for all sorts of things. <laughs> Don't uh, worry about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the marching percussion is probably going to be about fifteen to $20,000. Um, and that would include the stands for students to be able to put the instruments on when we are, when we're working. Um, for elementary school, um, the ORF instruments are the, they're the small, um, well they're not small, but they're the wooden instruments and they have the keys on the top and the students play them with the mallets. Um, to get a set of 15 of those is about $6,000. Um, and then we would want to make sure that we're replacing um, in a way that schools that are in the most need and the schools that have the most damaged instruments that we're trying to put those into places. So it's, that's one of the things that we really have to look at our inventory to see what really needs to be replaced so that we can kind of work that out. Um, a set of 30 classroom ukule ukuleles is um, about $1,200. Some schools have ukuleles. Buckets are free from um, low or not low sorry Home Depot we had buckets to, um, donated from there um, I know there are plenty of computer programs as well um, that students will be able to compose music on and those are yearly subscriptions so that's a little bit the sets for 6,000 how many it's it would be let's see the one I pulled up today it's 15 and there's it's a varying sizes so you have like some glockenspiels which are the metal bars um, xylophones and um, metallophones the xylophones are the wooden bars and metallophones are also metal bars so it's 15 at 6,000 each mm -hmm. okay how about the harp I'm always been a little the harp <laughs> It's 15 for six, I'm that are 6,000 for each. No, 15, it's a 15 set for $6,000. Oh, okay. So there's 15. So, because I misunderstood so, that. Did you get that? Oh, no, it's, it's not 6,000 each, it's 6,000 no, for no, 15. No. For total? Yeah. yeah, for 15 instruments. Okay, yes. got it. 15 That's total instruments. But would you need that at different schools? Yeah, so we would have to look at and see what different so schools have. Okay, so, so we could get that and then kind of divide of, it up. The set of the 15 is 6,000. Yeah. Yes. But you might need four or five of those? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I had. Just yeah, so. yeah. Okay, that's what I was like. And I would know better like once we get inventories because the inventories are not complete or up to date. We didn't really have them until last year, so we would need to do our homework on that. I think this sounds great because my kids are still wondering what they're supposed to do with all the practice they had on a recorder. And so, <laughs> so I support the music and arts, definitely. <laughs> the recorder is a special instrument. You could have a recorder ensemble in your house. Exactly. I could give you some music. Would you like some? <laughs> so, no, this sounds good. <laughs> uh, thank you. So I'm pretty sure, I mean, Aldo's not here to. Yeah, I'll talk to Aldo. Okay. Let's know yep. what we have. We get. I will make sure that, uh, that these students get these instruments. Mm. Um, but thank you for your presentation and your time. Great. Looking forward to the concert on the 20th. Yes, 20th. yes. it's going to be wonderful. Students sound amazing. So. Yeah. You're going to be week from tonight. Am, oh, am I performing? <laughs> no, no, I'm too old. I've aged out of high school. No. Sorry. Singing. <laughs> and yet, for, oh, sorry, Cynthia. Um, so when you talk about the new curriculum, are you exploring different curriculums or you have one in mind uh, that you have one? And is it already made or are you guys making this as you go? We are, we're creating it. Um, they, there, are, there are programs that we can use um, for our, like kindergarten to second grade, we like to use the fire up and, um, and second steps curriculum. Um, but I think more importantly than um, getting a canned curriculum or something like that, we're creating our own so that we can make sure that um, our students are receiving a well-rounded curriculum that is based on what we feel is most important for them. So last year we analyzed all of the new music standards that came out in um, 2019 and started there and decided what do we feel as a department is the most important thing for our students to be able to learn and experience in our classrooms. Um, and so we're, we're working from there to start figuring out um, where we want to go. We are um, selecting um, 
music that will be available to students. Um, we have a binder of music right now in elementary schools. Um, it, is, it is dated, um, so we're looking to update that with not only, um, not only removing some of the music from that that's not relevant anymore or that's not culturally appropriate, and then adding in new music that is um, multicultural, the world music, um, different things like that. So we're not going for a canned curriculum. Um, we will create it ourselves. Okay, because I just wonder if it's easier to get a curriculum and then adapt it better than creating it. Like, just the idea of like reinventing the wheel is that, I mean, it sounds like you obviously have had great discussions with your department, mm -hmm. so it's something that you guys have agreed with, but I just wonder time, effectiveness, and just like what you're seeing adopting it to the students that you guys have in front of you. Okay. Well, I know in the, in general for music, there are, there are not really a lot of canned curriculums that you can purchase and ones that you can purchase, um, in my experience, are not worth the money. Um, I think that we will have a far better curriculum with our teachers creating it and our teachers um, figuring out what works best um, in Brockton than we would if we were to spend money outside of the city um, on, a, on a curriculum. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other questions? Mr. Homer? Just before, it slips my mind, I was gonna say, I don't know if there's any opportunity for um, some of the high school ensembles or anybody to be able to perform for some of the younger kids, but I know at least 30 years ago or more, um, that was one of the, the big enticing features for the younger kids to kind of rope them in early and kind of showcase where they can go with music is um, being able to see, you know, the older kids performing in the highest levels. Um, and if that's something that, you know, Brockton could accomplish this year before the end of the school year at least, whether it's winter, spring, whenever, um, I know sometimes the kids get a big kick out of that and seeing a concert or something. So if they're not able to make it to a holiday concert, if there's an opportunity for them to see something later on in the spring. I think that might be a good investment in, in time and some in-house field trip or something like that if they could come to the high school and see a performance. That might be, might be worth looking at that. Um, and we, we had looked into that for the holiday concert. It didn't end up yeah. working out that we could get it done. We were going to have um, the middle school um, band and chorus mm -hmm. students come to the high school, but um, there's a half day yeah. that Thursday, um, which would make, which make, make busing difficult. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the all-city uh, chorus and band concerts that happen the beginning of March where uh, we have our high school groups that perform for the middle school groups and so on but I would love to see more opportunities like that because I agree with you we need to expose <coughs> students to that at a younger age yep. no further questions thank you very much and hopefully next time that you're in front of us um, all those uh, music instruments are purchased that's awesome thank, thank you, you so much I appreciate it thank you <clears throat> Kevin Carew, uh, if you could come up and uh, give us an update on our athletics uh, and any other things that are going on. Good evening, everybody. Um, we just finished up our fall season. Um, back in November, we had um, a lot of great success on the field and on the courts. We had three of our <coughs> student athletes get named to the Herald All Scholastic teams, two for football, one for soccer. Uh, and that soccer player actually uh, got selected for the All New England team, which is quite an accomplishment. We're still waiting to hear about who has been selected for Enterprise All Scholastics. Coaches have put in nominations, so hopefully within the next week or so we will have those uh, teams. Uh, we had three of our teams qualify for the MIA tournament, that was boys and girls soccer and our football team. Um, Thanksgiving Day game at Fenway was absolutely fantastic for those of you who went. I mean, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. The kids loved it, the coaches did, and I think the fans had an awesome time, so that was a, a great way for to send Coach Colombo out on his last game. Um, and because Peter was selected as a Patriots Coach of the Week uh, by Andre Tippett in the Patriots Foundation. Uh, we were invited to Gillette just last week, so Nick, uh, Mr. Lee and I went out with our, a group of our senior football players <laughs> and our senior from the cheerleading team, and um, they 
were part of a Visa financial literacy event that was out there, which was great. Teddy Bruschi was there, and a former, a, a lot of the former Patriots, and that was, you know, that was a great opportunity for them to go out. Um, and this weekend, because of our partnership with Fenway and how we conducted ourselves there, they've donated 50 tickets complimentary for our football team. So we have a, a busload of kids going out for the first annual Wasabi Bowl, which is going to be on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, so the kids are super excited about that. Uh, and now we have our winter sports underway. Um, they started the Monday after Thanksgiving, and we actually started competing last week. Um, that's why I was running late. I had to get the girls' basketball. Their home opener started. A um, couple of great things that we've been able to do. I've heard you talk about getting kids excited to go to Brockton High. We've hosted the middle school boys and girls soccer championships up at Marciano. Uh, we had the middle school football championships up there. So to put that on the big stage for the kids to get them in that kind of environment, and you know, we, we try to make it as first class and make it as memorable as we can for them. Uh, I think we accomplished that. And um, just a couple of updates. Uh, we have been working with a um, design firm, Ac Activitas. Uh, Mike and I have sat with them, and we have um, renderings for the two athletic fields uh, at Brockton High School behind the AZF rink at the Policino fields. So those, I think we're going to meet with them on Thursday to, to have the 3D renderings. And they're also working on um, coming up with design plans for some of the middle schools, the five, four middle schools. Is it, is it? It's the four compass. Four and compass and the Davis. Davis. So they are working, uh, they've been working with us since I want to say September. And it's our hope to go before the city council in the, in the new year to, to put the proposal together. Yeah, they'll come back to, when he's done with all of them, they'll come back to the facility subcommittee. Um, and then they could also do it the same night as the school committee and present it at the full school committee as well. And then we'll have to ask for a councilor to sponsor us to go back. Yeah. So and the only uh, thing that I mean that the update on the school board. School board the um, school from board. The, so the new school board we. It's a video school. The video school board out at Marciano. I mean that that one has you know we've got our money's worth out of that and um, I want to say in January it's going to be delivered and it's quite a process I mean because it's wireless we need to do the internet running up to the press box so there's a little bit of work that's going to be done but when it is finished uh, it's, it, it's going to be fantastic like I said it's going to be a video board um, three separate screens or one big screen you can do a multitude of things with it and it's just not going to be for football it'll be for you know if we want to have family movie nights out at the stadium uh, there's a projector capability for it um, we can show pictures at graduation as kids coming across the, we can do a live feed of the stage so parents that are sitting far away will be able to see the sons and daughters walk the stage so there's just a lot of things that we didn't have before with this yeah we we sent out appeal to them in may in may and yep. just COVID has <laughs> delayed all this stuff. So mm -hmm. we hope to have it. Installed. We hope to have it uh, hopefully by the spring season. It yep. should be done and then should be ready for graduation. Yep. That, that's our hope. Questions by any members? Mrs. Ellis. So I have a couple of questions or clarifications maybe. Sure. Um, the two fields that, are, that we have the renderings for behind the AZF, what kind of fields are they? Well, they are, uh, they can be used for a number of things. So football, soccer, lacrosse, softball, track, and we'll have a practice baseball infield. So we can, I mean, the good thing about the turf is we can line it by season. Mm -hmm. So we won't put all the lines out because that can, that can get confusing with all the different sports. Yeah. So we have talked to our facilities department and they would paint it just based on the season. Um, but it can be used for just about anything. And the band could go out there. I mean, it's just not for athletics. Okay. Uh, it can be used for a number of things. And are we thinking the same concept with the additional five at the middle schools? I think the additional five, it's all going to depend on what they come back with their survey, is mm -hmm. like how much space they have and what can fit in there. <coughs> uh, but this, this company we work with, I mean, they're, they're pretty creative and they can give you all the uh, possible options. Um, so I would suspect it would be football, soccer, and then you could probably do a baseball, softball <coughs> if the middle schools bring that back. But right now they don't have that. 
Okay. And, you know, with the renderings that we just received for the two fields behind the high school, what would you say in terms of the turnaround time before actual work begins on these? Like, what, you know, what well, season are these athletes going to be looking at? Being yeah, so I field? think that what Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, they said if we go to city council and we get the approval for the budget, and then there's permitting that goes in um, that has to go through, they said probably shovel in the ground maybe July, July of, of August. And hopefully be finished by Thanksgiving or Christmas of 2023, yeah. if all goes well. Um, will this help us? Will this help us redirect some of the scheduled um, games practices that we're, util that we're utilizing for fields that fall under the Parks Department? I believe it would because I think we talked about having our outside grounds folks maintain the turf and, and just make sure that it's, you know, they have to do a uh, grooming of it like every week just to make sure that the pellets that are there just lay consistent. Uh, I think it would definitely, it would take off from the Parks Department because the Parks Department doesn't even take care of the uh, Policino fields. It's our outside grounds. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we take okay. care of those. Yeah, but this would just give us so many options because right now there is only one turf field in the whole city. Yeah. <laughs> and between football and soccer and all the seasons, and then, you know, with the weather around here, it's a little bit of rain and the, the grass fields are unplayable. This will just give more people more of an opportunity to, to play. If we did, I'm just spitballing here, throwing it out there. If we did do the five middle schools, even though we don't have those, some of those sports at the middle schools, we could still use those fields even if they're high school games, correct? So they'd be, inter I mean, they'd be interchangeable for whatever sport. It doesn't, it, I guess it doesn't matter if we do those fields over whether we offer those sports at the middle school at the time. Mm -hmm. There's still new fields we'd be able to utilize globally. Am right, I, it's community-wide, too. Yeah. Community-wide, sure. And I, mean, think, I think that is the, the big struggle because we have so many people that want to use Marciano because of the turf and because they can play year-round, Yeah. Uh, especially soccer. In our community, it's probably the most popular youth sport. We have that in basketball. Um, but I just think by having two more fields, it just gives coaches and teams just more of an opportunity to, to get out there. That's exactly, I was in my head, I'm thinking soccer, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. It's one, the one sport that I think is, not one, but is so international with how diverse our population is. I can see it being something that is pulling in a lot of students. Mm -hmm. Just, and I figured if we did the five middle schools, you're right, having the two extra is going to be a huge lift for us. Mm -hmm. But if we had the other five, that would be amazing. Yeah. And Agreed. what would be, a, n cost aside, for something like that, they're already working on the renderings for those five, right? Right now, where they're, they've started yeah, they working on those. Yeah, they said they probably have um, something for us mid-January. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, good. Because we Thank want, you. like, this, what the city council <laughs> instructed us to do is come back with everything. Yeah. Okay. So with Fair all enough. with the high school behind in the Policino fields and then with all the, the middle schools. Perfect. We added the Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other no, that's okay. Thank you. No other questions? Um Marciano Stadium, I know we had a conversation about uh resurfacing that. Would there be a a t would we wait to do the surface over? before the Policino, or do we get the Policino field done first, then tackle Marciano so you don't lose? Great question. That would, we would have to, if that did come to fruition, we would have to get with the company that won the bid just to see what their timeline was, because turf fields, I mean, they're, they're a hot commodity around the state, and finding people that do the work correctly is also another challenge. Um, he gave us a price for that, correct? So he gave, yeah. I want, I want to say it was close to 1.2. Yeah, for to, 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 would, to remove it. bring it forward to the same. To you remove wanna, it and then put it down and to resurface the track. I think it was yeah. all in one. Okay, so that that's what they wanted to do. Way. Like, while we're here and you're ripping up the you turf and you have, you, you would have track. to, yeah. Yeah. So I think so that's... Would, we, we would put it in with the full request. And that way you could bid those two jobs together 
so that they're at the high school did they do both at the same time mm -hmm. uh, according to the schedule so right. we're not losing a football a football season. soccer field yeah, yeah, hockey no, so i would sure. if if it, i had in a, in a perfect world if they spring, could say that they summer. could it like at the end of the spring season like may june right after right gradu after graduation, right after graduation would be the that's best. when i would want them to to do that project so we knew it would be done the weather usually cooperates and then you'd have your field ready for the fall season now looking at the uh the middle schools, are we looking at actually, you know, adding uh, a track as well, not just a playing field? I don't think that we <clears throat> took a look at adding a track, did we, we Mike? Could. We could, but I mean, that's that's a huge, exp I mean. I mean, I, I mean to, to, to offer, because in the middle schools, we do have. Uh, yeah, a track and field. We do yeah, offer track, track but we do offer it up at Marciano. So I think, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do bring the uh, kids from the middle school yep. up, Marciano. up to Marciano, and we race right right there. Because we have the stands, we have the facilities, I mean, we have the restrooms, I mean, there's all the, the things that you need to have something like that. And what do we have, about four or five of them? We could look at it, track, track, at least one four or five them, meets. Put it on the other side of the city. About, about yeah. 70 kids at I'll talk yeah. to the guy. So I just think that, I mean, to put the, to put a be, track Maybe in. I'll have them consider, like, look at east and north, just at this, so there's a Give us a price. It will be expensive, but yeah. at least it gives you one on the other side of the city. Okay. Because we only have one track, you know, in the city. Yeah, it's we'll like if I live on the east side of town, I have to drive all the way to, yep. to Brockton High or on the north side. I mean, the west is right mm -hmm. there, but, you know, having another option in the city to have a track, and then, you know, that would be wonderful, especially with the middle school, so you don't have to bust the kids to the high school um, to do that. And also, we have a beautiful tennis court out there. And I know I've asked you about uh, the basketball court because uh, we don't have one at, at, at uh, Brockton High. Mm -hmm. And we explored it and looking at a location where we can. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't. I think ja no, Jamie has. I think Jamie might have, but I have not been he involved has. in that. I'll have, he'll have to give us an update because Jamie Domesco was working because he worked for the co with the company that did West. So okay. I can get an update from him. We were looking at the old courts that used to be volleyball. They were volleyball courts. Right on the other side of the pool. In between the pool and the, the softball with those containers as a real flat surface that used to be squash or yeah. some yeah. No, they, they were, they were uh, volleyball courts. The, they were also ball. I knew yeah, they And were. the squash courts were over by where the freshman yeah. football field is now. Oh, wow. I think that would be because it's so flat. You know, yeah, it's actually would be the be easiest place, the cheapest place to put it, because it mm -hmm. was r volleyball courts. Yep. The pavement's still there, it just has to be ripped up. Mm -hmm. What are we doing for recruitment to grow our athletics? Um, I remember last time mm -hmm. you were in front of us, you told us that, you know, the numbers were declining, specifically yep. with the, our female athletes. Mm -hmm. So um, I do have the numbers here in front of me from the fall, and I'm happy to say that um, we do have more females participating than we have in the past, you know, before COVID. Um, and I saw the same with winter sports. So um, I just think that by, number one, putting a lot of what we do on social media, the way that the kids follow it on our Instagram page, and um, that has helped, you know, get some excitement. Also, I know that um, before COVID, actually a month before the, the, we shut everything down, we had all of the middle school kids that were interested in athletics come up to the high school. Uh, we toured them around the facility. They got to see a basketball game. I would love to do that again come February, right before break, uh, see one of, the, one of the home games play. I know that some of our coaches have invited the middle school kids up to watch the games. Uh, during the season, we'll continue to do that. I want to say that uh, we have some camps lined up with our basketball and volleyball coaches to get our middle school kids involved. So as much as we can to you know, get the kids excited to come up to the high school, we'll continue to do it. But I mean, just Tony, just last year alone, we didn't have enough girls to have a JV soccer team. Oh. And um, this past year, we did have a JV and a varsity team. And uh, we had, let me see, 41 girls total in the program, which was good nice. compared to 18 the year before. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you for your time. If anybody else has any other questions, Mrs. Mentioned, um, the summer camps for middle school students. 
or was it the clubs? That, that would be uh, summer camps. Did you? One of the motivations that you do to recruit, yeah. you said something about. They just have the instructional camps is okay. where it's like a, a day or two where the kids come up and for two or three hours they work with the kids from the varsity teams just on skills and drills and maybe do a little bit of scrimmage. That's the plan to do. I know that the girls basketball coach wants to do that. So um, is that co-ed or that's just like. That, that would be just we, we, we target the middle school girls okay. for the for the girls team, and then I'll talk with uh, Coach DeBarros and see if he wants to get the middle school boys up. Which and I'm we sure hosted, we, um, we, uh, um, we gave um, Coach DeBarros permission to host the summer league mm -hmm. at the high school this year, because which hasn't been held in a long and time. He, and he had a uh, fall league up there. Yeah, there too. Had, oh yeah, fall too. So we've been able to. And Mario um, Lamas runs a big summer program, which also gets a ton of the middle school kids involved. And then, yeah, Manny did the, the fall league, fall which league. we mm -hmm. haven't done in a long time. Right. And binary students, do they just play whatever they identify as? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. There's no, like, has there been any, like, rules from the... No, from, um, from the MIAA? No, yeah. it's just however they identify, if um, that's, that's where they play. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is Ellis. Um, you said social media is working really well. Who does your social media? We have a couple of people. We have uh, Jess Hodges, yeah. uh, communications director. She has another girl working for her, Kelsey Lynch. Yeah. Uh, so anytime we get photos or scores we send that to them and, and they post everything and I want to say that we had last time I checked 2400 followers on Facebook and close to the same number on Instagram have we ever thought about um, I'm doing really bad I'm just making this up but like looks like athletic ambassadors you know not just Kelsey and Jess but like mm -hmm. having you know actually students that maybe are part of like the photography club or something that attend events and getting like real-time photos with their mm -hmm. friends like that kind of thing and and using the word community I'm just I'm throwing it out there because that kind of fun you know it's it comes through in social media especially mm -hmm. if you have a student that's like look where I am right now like and I realize that's a lot more work it's easy for me to sit here and say that yeah. because it takes a lot of work but maybe eventually it would be something that we could have students rolling up their own pictures mm -hmm. to show that they're attending these events which would encourage other students and everyone to attend them yeah. I think that's a great idea I mean I think that's something that we could work with the art department if we have some students that are really passionate about photography and we get them in and they can get action shots and send them to Jess and I think that's a great idea. And TV club films yep. a lot of the sports in the area on DCA. They are kids doing that already, but they could do still photos too. Mm -hmm. It, it just feels like when it's coming from their perspective, it's, it's a far more powerful message than us saying, come to the games. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're enjoying themselves laughing and that sort of thing. And we have a student representative that comes in and does reports for us for the school committee meetings. And it's one of, I know for me, it's one of my most favorite times coming to school committee to see what's happening on the screen with those smiling faces and that those pictures came from them, like they're reporting on themselves. And for me, it's powerful. I just think it might be something that would be a good draw. Okay. Peer to peer. All That's right. all. Cool. Thank you. Good question. Mr. Homer? Nothing? I have one more question. Um, D1, big school, 4,000 plus. Um, where does our athletics department support each different sport with our student athletes that want to go to the next level? As far as getting their um, game film, mm -hmm. talking to recruiters, wh wh how do we support that? Well, one of the things that we have done is we've purchased um, the Huddle account, which is the Huddle is a it's a service that we pay for. I mean, it's it's not cheap, um, but what it does is you're able to share game film uh, with other teams. Um, kids can access the accounts and take game footage and make highlight films that they can send to college coaches. Coaches have access to it to, to do the same thing. Um, the unfortunate thing with our huddle, we have a brand new huddle camera 
that they gave us for indoors for the gym, but the way that the gym is constructed, it doesn't meet the setbacks to install it. So um, coaches have been filming with their phones and iPads and, and uploading video that way. But the, we had somebody from Huddle, we had actually two representatives come out to see if they could make the camera work. And the way that the beams run down the, the sidelines, you need a 10 foot setback and we don't, we don't meet it. Uh -huh. It's, it, which is crazy, but there's not one spot in that gym that they could make it work. But we do have the capability, like I said, the kids can see their videos, they can see their, um, their game film, they can break it down, they can send it. I know our coaches have been very involved in, in contacting coaches for the kids who they feel can play at the next level. Uh, one of the things that they're stressing is their academics. And, um, because a lot of the kids, for as talented as they are, if they don't have a certain GPA, they won't even get an opportunity to, to talk to a coach. But I think that we do have There's a lot of guidance good... counselors in place. Dave Ray is helping out. Um, yeah. I think that he gets, I mean, honestly, I think he just gets overwhelmed with the number of, of, of kids that go to see him and the parents that call. Yeah, we might have to think um, about that I should season. I have one that's just assigned to athletics. Well, we have yeah, one now, but just it's just got so big. It just it, it it's just gotten big, and I mean, there's a lot of things that kids so never uh, we're one. trying to bring them up to speed about. If you think you're going to play at the next level, to get them uh, signed up for the NCA Clearinghouse, create an account, make sure that they're taking all the classes they're supposed to to be NCA eligible. So there's some education that we need to continue to do with our kids, but I feel that our coaches have identified those uh, uh, boys and girls that can play and they're, they're getting them the, the correct information and getting their info out to the, to the collegiate coaches. Okay. One last question, promise. Um, how do you evaluate our coaches? How do we evaluate this? Well, there's a few things that I take a look at is number one is um, how many kids start the year, how many kids finish the year. I think that's super important that you retain those kids, um, I like to see them do exit interviews with the kids to figure out you know, what things worked, what didn't work, um, what could we do to make the program better, uh, how they interact with kids, how they interact with parents, uh, how do they communicate with me. There's a, there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm pretty confident that I've been here for seven years that the, the coaches know what we expect, just not myself, but what Mike and the school committee and the principal and the community expects from, from our coaches that work with our kids. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. Ellis? I'm sorry. It's Wait. okay. I swear this is the last one. <laughs> last time we met, I remember us talking about the challenges with getting um, getting physicals, getting physicals from students. Still for them. a challenge. Okay, I was curious if we had made any headway with that or if it's still something that we're chasing and well, struggling. We will continue to offer free physicals. I think yeah. that we'll do that with Signature Healthcare um, before the end of the school year and we're going to encourage the kids again that yep. if you get it in June, you're good for the whole year. Okay. So even if your physical is going to expire in October, just get it done now, it's free. Uh, also, um, Linda Cahill sent me a uh, stack of free physicals for urgent care over in South Weymouth. I was able to give those out before the start of the winter season, and I wanna say that uh, eight kids took advantage of that. So, so we're trying as best we can. And you if know. Um, the Neighborhood Health Center ever gets set up at the high school, that's right. part of what they have to provide. That's and what that's I was thinking too. All the time. Yeah. Like that's not just June. Or June. That would be, they, they would have to do it at least three times a week. That's part of the whole, like, free physicals for students to. Yeah, to be able to play athletics. Yep. Yeah, no, right. That you know, that, that's a requirement of their grant. Okay, perfect. I just figured I'd ask because I remember yeah. we were talking no, about it's a struggle. it. We have you kids. guys were trying so hard and. It's like, yeah. so thank you for the update. Yeah, of course. No more questions, Tony? You got one more for me. Mm -hmm. I got <laughs> have one more for you. Family ID, can you explain uh, family ID and do you feel that it works? Yeah, uh, and honestly. And how does that yeah. affect families that don't have the capabilities to get on there too? Well, I think that uh, where we used to be with getting kids registered for sports and where we are now, we've come a, a long, long way. Um, I think, I think the one-to-one -one device is really 
the one benefit of COVID. Yeah, I mean, device and now we have kids that can log in with their laptop. Um, and the beauty of it is if you register, once you register and create an account as a freshman, when you go to register for winter season or spring season, even the next year, your account is still there. So it will autofill all the information you provided from the previous season. So all your parents really need to do is just sign off on the, the consent forms, the concussion waivers. There's just, I think there's eight separate things that they need to do. Everything else is autofilled. So it has really helped coaches. I mean, where I share the file with them. I mean, you can ask Matt if he had 100 kids trying out for football and six or eight different pieces of paper came in for this, that, and the other thing. I mean, there's a stack of papers like this. Now I just share an electronic file, and all that information is right there. So when they travel, we've had issues where kids have had been injured. The trainer is able to look up the kid, call the family. This is what's going on. We're not shuffling for papers. So I just think that it's just made it so much easier for families, coaches, trainers. Um, I think it's been a game changer. And for the amount of money we pay for it, I think it's one of the best bargains we have. How do we, we only use that at the high school level, not the middle school, correct? Well, Nick would have to speak to it. We, tr we tried, um, but the way the platform is set up, um, like Kevin's umbrella is one school, Brockton High. I would have to have seven individual schools, so it wasn't going to calibrate the same way no. uh, as Brockton High. I'll speak. It is awesome. I think it's awesome what it provides. But it wouldn't it wouldn't work with middle school unless we were all under one umbrella and they couldn't do it for me because we tried we tried mm -hmm. a few years ago because that would make make it far easier because as you can imagine with middle school the amount of paper that goes home and doesn't come back is is it would be easy but um, they just couldn't with the platform they couldn't figure out a way for us to utilize that without. Um, making seven separate accounts, which wouldn't really help at that point. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, right, Kevin. Sorry so long-winded, but thank you for having me. All right. Next, uh, we have Mr. Nick Lee, if you can come up and give us an update on middle schools. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we have uh, just finished up the fall season. We had, like Kevin said, the soccer championships at Brockton High, which is always good, like Kevin said, getting the kids accustomed to that field and what we can provide at Brockton High. Um, we also had the cross-country season, which we now do at, at West. Um, so, Pluff took home the girls and boys championship for soccer and um, North was victorious in um, cross country, which is one of the uh, best seasons of the year because it really includes a lot of kids. Um, we ran into um, the problems, I believe, when we were in here last year. With the, the biggest problem I had, obviously, is still the physicals. Um, Linda gave us a bunch of vouchers, which really helped. Um, and the buses, the buses are great now. Um, I've always had to, no matter how organized I am, the buses always seem to be something you, something happened every day with first student. And now being able to have a bus at the middle schools and like start on time. I mean, I'd have parents call me and ask what time the game starts and I can't even really, I hope 315. It could be anywhere from 315 to 345, you know, inside of that. Uh, that's my hope. But this year has been awesome. Um, I know last year we delayed till after Christmas to play basketball for that reason to get that under control. But the that is the biggest problem with the middle school sports to that to this point was always getting there, getting the kids there on time as best we could. And now we seem to take care of that, which has uh, been a blessing. Um, we have intramurals running um, elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, basketball season just started, um, and everything is seems to be going fine. Um, 
the physicals, I'm hoping, will take care of themselves once that building is built, because that is still a big, a big problem. Um, you know, is getting, you know, I went as far as looking into last year temporary guardianship and putting kids on a bus and um because i have to be the one to look at a 12 year old and say they can't play because they don't have a physical which is awful um so that any help in that area moving forward if we could remedy that um middle school is looking pretty good uh, when we started the track a few years ago that's a big hit at brockton high um when we do the meets we have probably about 300 kids total for that for the year um, which is great uh, I'm good with equipment uh, shirts all that stuff I really don't have I don't have anything to ask for really <laughs> nice any questions from the members Mr. Homer I know we, we talked about the physicals just a minute ago with Mr. Caro as well but is is there anything that we need to do in terms of communication for families is it is there anything that's like a is it a language barrier is it anything about um i know it, it's maybe once the student is an athlete and is involved they understand the rhythm of like your physical is good for 13 months right so yes. I mean, it's good for but is it do you find that is it a persistent problem every year it's the same student or and, the, and they're just not up to date or do they once they're involved in activities or athletics they kind of understand the rhythm. They know what they need to do. It doesn't become a problem. Is it a problem with the middle school? I think they know what they need to do. Okay. I think it's, you know, in my house, my mom took care of all that, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I think they're all aware of what they need to do to get a physical. It's just getting them there. Getting them there, right. Um, having a guardian there. Yeah. You know, a lot of times the kids' parents work at night right. or they're not around. Um, that is the biggest problem. I don't think it's that they... They don't know what's expected. I think they're, and that was the whole idea about family ID. Kevin put me onto it. That was also um, a way, if we could put that in at the middle school, it was going to alleviate some of that problem at the high school um, because we would start them in sixth grade. Right. It just didn't work out the way. And I tried to figure out a way to um, put all of our kids into. <laughs> Uh, family ID, it just didn't, it just, it, it ended up being more work. Okay. Um, so I think that in the future, if that building is a possibility, that's going to really help. Okay. Um, my numbers have been pretty good this year, um, all things considered. I, just, I think in terms of, you know, working in the schools, I know when students are registering, they need to have a physical to be, you know, just registered in, in that regard, too. And I know sometimes students will look for a copy of their physical. We'll have to, like, send them to the nurse to get a copy from their record to bring to athletics and say, like, look, here's a copy of my up-to-date physical. But if there's anything that we could do to just kind of get that communication out earlier, maybe at the beginning of the school year or yeah. push harder, just anything that we could send home for families, any way we could use our media outreach to try and clarify that maybe make it a little more simple but I understand like you said like the logistics yeah. of a, a parent having it's interesting it because kids can participate in phys ed they can participate in intramurals but if they play a sport they need a physical <coughs> yeah that's a good point you know it's, it yeah. doesn't make much sense but. good point well hopefully too I mean we if on 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 the just on the school registration side too if we can tighten that up in some regard, that'll alleviate some of the strain on athletics because they would have a copy. We would have an up-to-date physical at the start of the year for the students who are enrolled anyway. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something we can work on from the school committee side. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> any follow-up questions from any other members? Mrs. Ellers? <laughs> um, Actually, I have a question. Sorry. Ms. Mendes? Oh, how young do kids start with the sports? Is there anything in the city for like four-year-olds? That's definitely a personal question. Matt, <laughs> <laughs> community schools. Um, well, you have intramurals at the elementary level. Yes, but not, not four-year-olds. Oh, four. Oh, so it starts at like probably six. Yeah. On there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five, school six. age. Yeah, four-year-olds. I'm trying to think. Had we thought of anything? Probably youth soccer. Youth soccer. What's that? Because like Totten has soccer, and soccer is yeah. such a big um, sport is that the, here. The, the town? 
school. Or is this leagues that are out of the Bro Brockton Public Schools? Like yeah, yeah independent it, 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 Matt can speak to that. Um, most of the time, those leagues are outside of what we're doing. Okay. Um, that would be like BYS, BYSA. Yeah, the Brock, and, Yeah. Okay. They run a really good program. All That's right. been around forever. Forever. The BYSA, they run a really good program. Because I just wonder, because we have a pre-K department now. Right. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like we're trying to keep it to the kindergarten level and up. That's yeah. What it like. So the, 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 real, um, the real issue becomes the space and the time. Okay. Um, with the amount of kids that you could, you, you could have in a gym with one teacher after school with intramurals. Um, a lot of times you can, you can uh, do different things at the middle school. Like we, could, we have intramurals at a few schools in the morning, which is great. Mm. Um, and then in the afternoon as well. So you could get two different sets of kids. A lot of times at the elementary school, um, you have one, one or two teachers doing intramurals for an hour, an hour and a half. You, you've got to kind of stagger the amount of kids that you're going to have. You can't offer it to, you know, uh, kindergarten through sixth grade every day because yeah. you'd have 400 kids in the gym and that wouldn't be too safe. Yeah. Um, so we try and spread it out throughout the year to give each kid an opportunity um, for intramurals. And it, and it becomes a lot easier in the warmer weather too when you can go outside so your numbers can go up. Um, in, in the fall, early fall, in, in the spring. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? With athletic sport that is played at the high school level, that is not offered at the middle school level. Oh man, lacrosse, baseball, softball, um, swimming. Field hockey, tennis. tennis, golf, is that it? Pickleball. Pickleball is great. You haven't played it? No. Um, <coughs> so what are we doing to grow that? Uh, um, for us, the biggest problem is the space. And those fields would take care of a lot of that. Um, and Matt and I work real close in the fall because there's a lot going on. We have football. Um, soccer and cross country at every school so we're always in close um, dialogue to navigate that and make sure you have the space um, the only way I could see adding more sports is if we started flip-flopping seasons and play things out of season um, you know like move soccer to the spring uh, for middle school um, so you could create more space. Uh, right now, the space in the fall, for example, you have football, soccer, two teams, and cross country all playing on one field at each middle school. Um, so adding something to that, like if you were to add field hockey, I don't know where, when or where they would practice, you know? Um, so the space is the real, the real issue with middle school. So uh, what would be, you know, I mean, you have football, obviously it's just the boys, so you have mm -hmm. females that play as well, and you have boys and girls, so you basically have three sport, no, actually four oh. going on at the same time. Yeah. And I know MIA doesn't, you know, oversee middle school sports. No, so that. So you could always I change can kind of do, do what I want, yeah. Change and do whatever. Um, if you were to pick a sport to offer for the middle school level, what would it be right now as far as interest in playing? I mean, I would personally love to see baseball back. I was disappointed because I played play at West. Um, but that would probably be the that would probably be the most logical, I think, as far as space, time. Uh, the problem is every year I do kind of a survey to see um, how many kids are interested in there. I think one year I had 11 was the last time I did it, 11 kids in the entire city. I think four of them didn't have gloves. So um, I, I think what would help the high school would be a, a 
a feeder for you know field hockey or lacrosse, something like that. Um, and we'd have to maybe play that in between a season or something to give um, give those teams ample space. Because the real issue is the space. I figured, you know, if you're offering volleyball at the high school, so you know there's an interest. Why isn't there right. interest at the middle school we, level now? We do have volleyball. And then swimming. It, it, and when I look at athletics, it's why should I wait or a child wait until they get to the high school to play tennis or so to pl join the swim team, lacrosse, if, yeah. if we're not offering it. Right, I think the, the tennis courts are the only courts we have in the whole city right now, right, as far as tennis courts. That are usable. Yeah. Maybe Gilmore. I mean, I'm with you with the pool, too, because I think I could get a lot of kids for swimming. But uh, that pool is constantly in use. I don't know when we would fit that in. Because um, they have a fall and spring season, right, Kevin? No, uh, just winter now. Oh, it's just winter now? Just winter. Uh, because there would be some interest in that, I'm, I'm sure. No, that was something we could look into for the fall. Yeah, like I said, you, the you, fall's not used, Kevin, after school. No, no, the pool okay. Is pretty, pretty open in the fall. Yeah. It, with community schools. Yeah, they usually use it Saturdays, though. Saturdays or nights. Or nights. But we could be out of there. We could be in and out of there before community school starts. Yeah, that's definitely something that. Um, and again, it showcases what we have at Brockton High. It brings the middle school kids there. I know Kevin and I. It, um, and Matt are constantly trying to sell, you know, Brockton High all as much as we can. I mean, um, I still think it's great uh, school. I still think it's all the offerings are great, um, and I, you know, I promote the school as best I can with my middle school uh, student athletes uh, when I go and speak to them. Um, so I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, swimming is something we could probably look at. Uh, I think we could probably fit that in and I think I could probably get a good amount of kids interested in that yeah. and it wouldn't be such a bad thing for the city as well um, I know we, we were at school committee a couple of years ago talking about um, swimming with teaching kids how to how to swim and there was a real push for that um, this could be one of those ways yeah swimming is huge um, specifically what happened a few years ago with the right. tragedy at, at DW I know um, on the other side, a certain city council is, you know, advocating to get two mm -hmm. more pools in, into the city, one on each on the north and the south, um, which could be utilized right, right, uh, as well. So that's huge. I would love to see that. You know, uh, Mrs. Ellis. So I know last time we had talked, we I remember this time last year we were talking about baseball, and you were saying the same thing that like just recruitment is is tough and enough finding enough bodies to be able to recruit a full team. So I know this sounds like a very adult thing, but have we ever thought about um, doing just a very basic anonymous survey from like grades fourth to say eighth and keeping it super simple where we're asking, giving them a list of what they would want to play and then if they can play. And the only reason I'm saying can is because I also remember us talking about some individuals or some students that are, you know, they are the caregivers after school for mm -hmm. some of their younger siblings. Right. And so they may want to play, but they can't play because they have- See that a lot. Yeah, they have family responsibilities. And so, which totally understand. Mm -hmm. um, but have we ever thought about doing just an anonymous survey of certain before we're trying to figure out space. I've, I've done surveys in the past um, for that reason, but I've never gone that low to, like you said, third grade, fourth grade. Um, that's something. That's something easy. Something easy we could we could do. I could do that easily. And the only reason I bring that up is because to Cynthia's point. Um, some of these kids have started in soccer in pre-K. They've started playing sports early. And, I mean, I know I have a niece right now, and she's been through three sports already, and she's six. And she's like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of figuring it out. But I figured by, like, maybe fourth grade, they figured out kind of what they really like to play. But that's that's more for you than me. But I'm just throwing it out there. Like, maybe we could get an idea of what are the most popular sports that mm -hmm. from those age ranges they're looking for before we start start trying to solve for a space issue. Yeah. Let's figure out the want issue first. And 
along with want, how many can actually play if we're able to recruit them? Mm -hmm. Just an idea. That's a good idea. Um, and I'm always thinking along the lines of um, my thought process is I want to get as many kids involved as I can. Um, that's why cross country and track are great because it involves a lot of kids and um, the kids really seem to support each other with those two sports all the time. Um, and that's something that you, you have to see with your own eyes when we do cross country at, at West because it's, you, you go roll into the basketball season, it becomes super competitive, but in track and cross country, students from other schools support students from different schools and it's kind of a it's kind of one big team which is nice to see yeah um but that is an idea that, uh, of something that we could we could try and I, i'm just throwing it out there that you know if we start seeing now at those age ranges what the interest really is because to your point those are their organic feeders into the high school right. and into those athletic programs and the other thing too is like looking at the data if say we put lacrosse on there and we have only like two people that respond to lacrosse, yeah. is it does everybody understand what the game lacrosse is or is there really not an interest? Right. And then maybe that, you know, is an initiative of we need to introduce what these sports are really all about because maybe part of the population, because we have such a diverse population, maybe part of the population just really doesn't understand lacrosse. Oh, it's the truth for sure, yeah. So. Um, and that's also something, you know, I could tie in with, with phys ed as well. Um, I mean, oh, we yeah. try to introduce as many uh, new sports as we can on a yearly basis. Uh, the one I'm really looking into right now is um, eSports. That's really popular. I took a survey of kids at the lower levels. They love that. And they family. actually give out scholarships for that now. Yeah, yeah they do. Um, if you need any win. help, I rolled and out an eSports program before. I do, actually, because yeah. I'm not a gamer in any way, shape, or form. Never really was. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think my dad got me Nintendo. They sell games. Yeah, they do. You ever see those things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I got <laughs> Nintendo ten years after it came out. Yeah. I have um, a top on the side of the road somewhere. Yeah. So but no, that's very something popular. I'm, I'm looking into because that is something that doesn't require space either. And it's also um, a revenue generator for competitions. And so if you Big do time. League, yeah, if you do League of Legends, if you do Fortnite, they could you can draw other schools, you can draw even if we have right. competitions. Yeah. No no students there are just competitions that we hold that allow individuals to come in. Right. It becomes a revenue generator to pay for the to pay for the program itself. It's huge mm -hmm. right now. And um, the 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 issue I have is you can imagine how many people email me or reach out is there's a lot of uh, phony companies too that are that are into it. So any help that if yeah. you've done it, yep. um, if there's some names you could give me because I just started kind of really peeling back, trying to figure out how I could incorporate this into what we're doing. Um, yeah, I'll, we can talk offline. There's a couple yeah. of companies too that um, work specifically with nonprofits. And so with our diverse population, we may be able to have access to grants and some other things. So let's The absolutely last talk. survey I did, that was the most popular eSports. There you go. Then, then honestly, I hate to say it, that's what we, sh we should focus on. Like if that's the most right. popular, it's kind of like give the people what they ask for. Like if this is what the kids are yeah. asking for, I think it's something we should absolutely consider. Right. I mean, it took me a little bit to get on board with it to be honest. I know. Um, traditional athletics usually yes, have yes. the toughest time. Everybody else gets on board, but the traditional athletics right. are like, it's not really a sport. But then when you really get into it, you realize how truly competitive it's very it is. It's, very. Very big. it's almost as big as pickleball. Mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> pickleball is, is a craze, right? And I love pickleball. <laughs> uh, in regards to what you're saying, um, the survey, I also wonder about exposure. When we think about lacrosse, tennis, those aren't sports, from my experience growing up, that I was very much exposed to until I was in spaces right. that that was an exposure. Right. So um, I know like in Boston, I know to your point, Grant, there's like tenacity, I think it's called, yeah. where it's like they come in. I know you said space is an issue, so that's what I keep thinking. So a, no, when you just said space oh, is yeah. an issue in general, right, for the middle school students. So I just think like these grants and stuff are great, especially for exposure, sometimes they donate. Yeah. Uh, materials we have a tennis grant right expensive. now that donated. I, I have um, 
tennis material in every elementary school. They provided us with um, the uh, TSA, gave us a lot of equipment because I think they're worried about pickleball a little bit. So um, they want to get kids involved with tennis. They supplied us with um, nets, uh, rackets, uh, practice balls, you name it. They Each phys ed teacher has it. Uh, so we started teaching tennis at the, okay. at the elementary levels and middle school levels um, to get them interested because, um, and Mike taught phys ed, you go through the winter, it's, it, 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 it becomes long, long time staying in the gym. So we're constantly looking for um, different ways to entertain the kids and, and, and introduce different things. I'm working with um, uh, Paul at DW for the fir with the first tee as well and also uh, getting our special ed population involved with the first tee as well. Um, so I truly believe in branching out as, as much as we can because y you're right, uh, a lot of our kids are not introduced to these things mm -hmm. um, the same way as we were um, when we were younger. I mean, we just played anything that was in season, you know? <laughs> um, and there's bias among sports, unfortunately. Like, is one there? of my biggest regrets is never playing <laughs> soccer. Right. Because I associated soccer with certain cultures, and then it's so it was so ignorant because it's such an international sport. Like, right. It is, but they know? can't ever score goals. I'll never understand it. The goal is 90 feet wide. No one scores. <laughs> yeah, well, you get your cardio for sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions, members? No. Baseball. How long has that been out of play in middle school, and then also? What are we doing to introduce it to grow? Because we do offer it at the high school. Right. So I think it's 2015. And um, to be honest, uh, we, we got rid of it because it was at the point where I was going to need like an ambulance in every field <laughs> because of how bad it was. Um, I won't mention one of the schools. Well, actually, there was two schools that never even made it out of the second inning the whole entire year. So, um, and that was 2015. I believe 15. It yeah. was 15. Um, I, I do a survey it every year. It happened when all the, as you meant when I was a kid, you, we, every side of the city had a little league. Some had two. You had a North Little League. Brookfield had their own little league. East Side had yeah. two. We had East Side Improvement where I played and Downey. So you had, I don't know, 12 little leagues going. Now I think it's down to two. Two. I mean, so it's kind of... Uh, yeah, it's just not fast. I mean, I played it, um, went to school for it, and it's boring. <laughs> you know? Um, it is. I mean, I love it. But these kids are used to these fast-paced things, and when it's, it's slow and methodical, they, they're not interested. Yeah, kids don't want to stand in right field anymore with the off chance you're going to get a ball hit to you maybe once a game. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at it as <laughs> if we're not engaging or trying to grow it in our middle school that eventually it's going to die out yeah in the high school so yeah we've had not a couple having baseball is kind of crazy to me right not yeah. having that sport like it really is uh you know we were just at fenway right? uh, it's it's you know when i tried out uh for varsity baseball at brockton high there was like 160 kids trying out you know um i well, i do a survey every single year um I can I can just speak on what uh, those surveys read, and there's usually very very low interest in in baseball, um, and that's frustrating. Yes, because you got Nick and Kevin who both played minor league. Paid baseball. for my education. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, if there was if there was a, you know, every once in a while there's a there's a a group that comes through. Um, I think the most logical thing to do, um, if I was making the decisions, is you, you, you begin to look at what we talked about last year is maybe having one team citywide um, that feeds the high school. You know, um, I'm beginning to work with ADs uh, from outside of Brockton. I'm working with Randolph. I'm working with Holbrook, West Bridgewater. Um, so we're going to be playing them in basketball a little bit. Um, so it's something that we could branch out to other, other middle school programs as well. Um, you know, because ultimately, 
you, you're looking to get kids involved, but ultimately it's a feeder for the high school, and that and that's you know how it's supposed to be set up. Um, and I do I think the days of having seven baseball teams at middle school level are over. Um, but I do think we the, the, it could be a way to have one that travels around um, and keeps those kids together until they get to the high school. And again, if, if he, I do a survey and the numbers go up in baseball, that's something we can look at because we could easily do track and baseball without a problem. This is Alex. Sorry. Um, just for, to keep it in context, and <laughs> I'll use my age, not yours. Um, when I played sports in high school, there weren't as many sports offerings. So I guess my question is, when you played baseball, think about back then what the choices were for, for availability options for sports. Mm -hmm. And now, as we've grown and evolved, we're diluting like the 4,000 students that we've had or we're looking at at the high school, like we're, you know, and globally for the whole district. But we have so much more to offer right, right. now that and even I, w I went to West. Uh, we had soccer, basketball, and baseball. That was it. Those were the three that yeah. were offered. Yep. Yeah. Uh, football, but that wasn't run by the school department, right? Midgets, that was, no. Yeah. Midgets ran that. So. Uh, I just feel like the interest, obviously, the interest level isn't there comparatively to the other offerings. Definitely, yeah. Like if you said to a kid right now, would you rather play on a baseball team and try to be a baseball star or I'm going to put you in a chair and you're going to play in eSports? Oh, easily. That. I know the answer to that. And yeah. so I understand totally where Tony's coming from and we're thinking, you know, we don't want it to die out. But it may be a foregone conclusion in a way. And then I don't want to wait too much time before we ramp up in the area that is trending and is popular. Right. And it's a tough balance to decide to say, okay, we're going to put our resources in this direction versus this direction. And so, I don't know, I just wanted to kind of Well, because originally that I thought that it, this was a Brockton problem um, with kids not, but it's the surrounding towns are having trouble yeah. fielding teams too, uh, baseball and softball. Yep. Um, and I, I do think it's esports and different interests that have taken over yeah um, I mean I hate to sit here and, and say we can't do baseball because right 100% um, agreed 100 but that's agreed. where we're at and then we just have to again we just have to decide where we put the resources and so instead of trying to fit a square peg in a round hole by forcing it and trying to make baseball to still work mm -hmm. um, I just, I think that we have to be careful of doing that. That's all. Yeah. And I mean, things may change. We, we, you know, our numbers went down big time after the pandemic and now they seem to be climbing back up again. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, again, if we could just figure out the, the yeah. physicals, that would be, right. that would be ideal for me. Thank you. Any other questions? No further questions. Thank you. Right. And uh, look forward to an update later on. Next, we'll have Mr. Campbell come up and give us an update on the community school side. Take your mic off. Hi, I'm Matt Campbell. I'm the coordinator of recreation programs for the community schools. Uh, I had a list of things I was going to talk about, but I think I'm going to answer some of your questions you've asked and try and fill in a couple blanks. Uh, community schools partners with Brockton Baseball, which is one of the little leagues in town. We had 80 kids playing uh, fall baseball this year. They were, if, if I look at my numbers, Give me one second. There were 51 uh, grade, uh, ages 8 through 12 and another 30 grades 13 through uh, ages 13 through 16. Uh, so we do have some baseball offerings. We also partner with them for fall and summer league baseball as well. So there are kids that do play baseball in the city. Uh, a couple years ago when I first got this job, Mr. Thomas brought me down to brought me downstairs and asked about whether we could run middle school baseball, some sort of travel baseball team. And I think you'll find out what the, pro the problem you'll have is other towns don't offer it. Other towns do not run, no, 
there is a league down on the south coast. It does stretch as far as Bridgewater. That's been in existence for probably 50 or 60 years, and I they do have a a school-run baseball league. They're not taking new members. We looked at it for baseball and softball. So I think one of the things we run into for baseball is it's not a sport that is offered in other towns. So if we can't have uh, baseball at the seven middle schools, there's, there's a lack of games. So what we've done instead is gone uh, partnered up with one of the little leagues, and that stretches all the way to Babe Ruth. Uh, that's three seasons of baseball. That's fall baseball. There's a couple hundred people that play for us in the spring, and uh, probably about 60 to 70. It's pretty much the same as fall in the summer. Uh, I think earlier you asked about uh, four-year-olds. We don't have a lot of four-year-old options, unfortunately. Uh, Brockton Track Club is available. They work pretty closely with us, uh, and that's a spring, that's a summer program, really. Get going, I think, the first week of May, um, and they'll take. We'll take kids four, three, you know, depending on the age, and uh, that's twice a week until until the end of school, and then it's once a week in the summer. Uh, as soon as uh, you get to five, we have quite a few offerings. Uh, we have a, we have youth aquatics, which we had 25 kids in youth aquatics. That starts at grade five, which I'm guess I'm guess age five is probably kindergarten. Yep. Uh, we have kindergarten basketball uh, through BCB. Uh, that's the clinic that's at the George School. It's going on Saturdays right now. We are still if anybody watching at home, we are still taking people. There's plenty of spots available. Uh, and that's run by Jake Hackett, uh, who's a teacher at the Kennedy School, and uh, he he kind of overse oversees that section of our youth clinic. So we have options for five. Uh, that's a great clinic too. That's been that's been great for years. Uh, baseball, you can sign up for baseball. At, you know, in kindergarten, we'll get you playing t-ball out there. A uh, couple other things we have going on in the fall. Uh, we have a very successful youth wrestling program. Uh, the, the Brockton wrestling, wrestling coaches, the Sean Fentress, Mark Mendes, they run it. Uh, we have 40 kids play uh, youth wrestling at the Downey uh, school system, purchased wrestling mats. They take one of the, the gym at the Downey, they store them there. We have 40 kids in that, and there'll be another 40 coming in in the winter. Uh, we have middle school football. We had. 164 kids our first year. We went over 180 at one point. Usually the first week of October is when everyone's still playing. We had about 180 kids playing. Uh, we have four teams, and we do play teams outside the city. Uh, we had a championship game. Mr. Cairo, uh, we're very close with Mr. Cairo and uh, Mr. Lee for field space, because I think one thing you've heard everyone say is we don't have a lot of space. And even more importantly than space, we don't have any lights. So as soon as, you know, you get to play sports in October, 5 o'clock, it's dark. So it's very difficult for us to make games up when things rain. Uh, we do have the championship game every year at Marciano Stadium, the two years of the league's existence. goes very well. Uh, East and Pluff won it in year one. West, in a rematch, West, was, West beat them this year. Uh, Going through, we're in the winter time right now. Obviously, we have wrestling going on. We have two. We have a bunch of different basketball programs. Uh, BCB basketball, which I think Mr. Thomas, you were the founder of. One no, point. it was um, it pretty was, close to it. It was run. I was the first one to do it for the school. It was district. the Hancock. League. It was the Hancock League yes. that was run by Bill Magali, who yep. actually so did it. And I took it from. Then it came into community schools, mm -hmm. and I ran it for we I don't know ten years. Three hundred or so kids few more than that playing uh, grades K through 8. Uh, we also have travel basketball, which is run by uh, Kenny Montero, who runs the Friends and Mentors program that works in the school system. About 70 to 80 kids playing travel basketball, and th there is a difference. It's a little bit more money. It's, it's more travel involved, it's thus named travel basketball. Uh, and it's pretty high level. Teams typically do pretty well. We have grades 4, four through 8 in that. Uh, kind of excited about this, and we're just kind of putting a, the finishing touches on this this week. Uh, after the break, where uh, some people in the community, uh, John Forts, who's a local referee, 
uh, is kind of piloting this. We're going to be doing a girls basketball clinic on Monday nights at West Middle School. Uh, very excited about that. John has some shooting machines, and he's got daughters in the school. He's got a daughter in the school system who plays BCB. Uh, you know, and he's he was a point guard at Brockton High. I think he's you know probably graduating in the late '90s thereabouts. So he's gonna he's volunteering his time, totally free clinic, trying to draw more girls into playing basketball. Uh, I think that pretty much covers what we were we're doing sports wise. Uh, we were able to partner with. Um, we got. A, I was approached by Willie Wilson, who was, you know, sort of my mentor when I came. One of my mentors when I came to the school system. Uh, Willie was the former history department head at Brockton High. He was a track athlete at Brockton in the early, Brockton High in the early 70s, and he's retired. He's a BC grad. I think he's a double eagle. Actually, I think he did his masters there as well. And we've just had four of our football players last weekend in uh, Renee Haywood's office. Uh, redoing the Lou Montgomery documentary, the BC. Uh, Lou Montgomery, for anyone that doesn't know, is probably the most undersold Brockton athlete of all time. I mean, he just doesn't get enough attention. Uh, he was the first black athlete at Boston College, uh, star running back from the city of Brockton. The city of Brockton actually raised, he got a partial scholarship at BC. This is the 1930s. The city of Brockton paid, raised money and paid for his college education. He went to Boston College, and he was denied the chance to play versus teams from down south. He couldn't travel to uh, the Cotton Bowl versus Clemson, the Sugar Bowl at one point. Uh, and his career was kind of derailed by, you know, the se segregationalist south. And uh, the people we met with and some of our kids were taking part in the video. Uh, really proud, really the kids did a great job. Uh, they were very good at, you know, explaining how it kind of relates to, you know, sports in Brockton now. So you can look for that coming out. I think the people from BC said in March or February, late February. So I think that'll be kind of a treat for everyone to get to see. Any questions from Mrs. Ellis? Um, how many athletes, what's your population total? in community schools for athletes. Like, how many athletes are we servicing? I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. I'd be guessing uh, a lot of people do more than one sport. OK, so, so you're not unduplicated it's, numbers. It's very difficult. It's easily over 500 kids, Okay. 600 kids. I'd be hazarding a guess. I don't know how many. We have such a huge age range, mm. so many different programs. I've never thought to go through and check them off how many different individual kids. Because a lot of people, when you sign up for a community schools program, uh, you you create an account on on the website. And it's very common to see, you know, you signed up for BCB basketball for eight straight years. You might also sign up for aquatics. You might all, at a different time of the year. Yeah. It, it has all your, the summer programs, like get ready and mm -hmm. stuff. So I don't honestly know how many people. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Mr. Holm? Um, is the uh, is the swimming facility is it still operating right now in the winter season? And I know I, I, did, I forgot to bring that up during the um, when Mr. Carroll was visiting with us too. I know we were having some trouble with the heater in the pool a few weeks ago. Last I checked, uh, swimming. I know we have adult swimming as well, so I know that's going on. I've seen people going in and out of the pool. Okay. Uh, Swimming, sort of the, the flow of swimming in terms of uh, you know people signing up. The adult is pretty consistent. It's a pretty stable group of people. I think the same lady has been running it for many years. Youth swimming uh, tends to do very well with younger kids as they get older. Uh, you know, that's you're running into basketball, you're running into soccer, you're running into other sports. Okay. Is there any other questions? Um, can you just touch upon um, middle school um, football, as mm -hmm. far as the communities that we play and um, what you do as far as uh, getting the kids um, ready for the for the sport? So we have uh, we have four teams. Uh, West kind of has the most kids, so they so they're a team by themselves. East and Pluff are together. Davis and South are together. And 
uh, Ashfield and North are together. Uh, very fortunate this year. We first year was hard. Uh, we have busing. We were busing the kids from practice. So kids get on a bus at the Ashfield, they go to North for practice. Davis goes to South. Pluff goes to East. And about a week into the season, uh, the buses went away. We all know about the busing problems we had last year. None of that occurred this year. And I think Nick spoke to that earlier. It's wonderful. So would that really help get it, get the kids That's back and forth to practice? <laughs> uh, having our own buses is just so key. And then it really makes it easier because we have two very large teams. Uh, West has 50-something kids. Uh, so they were able to operate both an A, an A team and a B team. So if you didn't play on the Wednesday night A team, and they had seven games this year, we had to cancel one because of rain field conditions. Uh, they had three or four B games. East and Pluff, same idea. East and Pluff actually touched over 70 at one point this year. Uh, and football is a thing where kids try it. They try it for three weeks. Kids come late, kids join. So it's sort of a rolling number. But at one point, uh, East and Pluff had probably 65 or 70 kids. And they played three or four B games as well. Uh, our schedule, A and B games, we played teams, I could do this off the top of my head, uh, Randolph, um, Mashpee, Holbrook, Martha's Vineyard came, came up here four times, Nantucket came up here twice, uh, we, we sent teams to Reading, Woburn, Weston, and Weston came to Brockton as well, uh, Reading, Woburn, Wilmington, Melrose at one point, and I think Winchester. So we've had quite a, you know, the league is run uh, by a gentleman, Paul Manganaro, who is, uh, an in, he runs an engineering business up in uh, Wilmington. And he's, he's the president of the league, and he's, he puts together the schedule, and it's, it's been great. Uh, we're hoping to add a couple teams into the league in the southern section. Uh, it's a little bit more spread out than the north, so there's a little bit more travel. I mean, we do send teams down to Mashpee. Mashpee comes here three or four times. Uh, again, the biggest problem we have is fields. Uh, we had to, we have one week this year where it rained, it poured, and East Junior High floods and north you becomes there. North, yeah. beco <laughs> north becomes a cranberry bog west drains pretty well but yeah, it's actually, yeah, it does. you know as the light we were able to light up the field at west this year uh we get uh, facilities was able to get us uh some portable lights that was cool we played holbrook there but west is west dries pretty well but it's also you know, it was the sun glint, the sun glints over thorny lee and you have the gently rolling hills because there's nothing flat about that and it's, right. so it's not ideal. Uh, we get in, Mr. Cairo gets us into the stadium every chance we get, and the kids love that. And teams love to come in here and play Marciano Stadium. Uh, so field space is an issue. Uh, we keep all the equipment, and uh, school system's been very generous with the equipment that's in the, bot that's in the basement at West Middle School. Uh, so we bust all the kids, all four teams come over. We fit them uh, for helmets, shoulder pads right in the gym. Uh, they start the same time as the high school season. They end about three weeks before the high school season ends. We have a summer program. Uh, Aaron Montero kind of see, uh, was a phys ed teacher. He's also the North and Ashfield coach. He's a phys ed teacher at uh, Brockton High. He sort of oversees our strength and conditioning in the summer. So we have somewhere between 20 and 30 kids three or four times a week do that. It's free. Kids, kids come, they get a lunch, uh, they work out, throw the ball around. Uh, Will Wells, who's the coach at West, had about 10, 15 to 20 kids. We did a youth strength and conditioning a couple times a week uh, last spring. That was pretty successful. Uh, Will's actually kind of put together a little weight room in the locker room at West, so he's got, that's part of his mentoring program he runs at West, so he's got the whole football team working out at West on Monday afternoons, which is pretty cool. Like the, like the kids to be strong. Um, I know we're speaking about football, but is there any um, 
mentoring programs as far as, um, I know Nick, middle school and community schools, you know, partnering up a student, you know, one of the middle school kids with a, a kid at the high school with different uh, sports or. Uh, I was looking at a program, uh, one of the top program, high school programs in the state of New York is Somers High School. I couldn't even begin to tell you where it was. I was listening to a podcast and I heard the coach and it's very sim, it's similar dynamic to Brockton. Uh, they had a coach who was there for 40 years. His son recently took over. They run a mentoring program that we, we've we looked at. We haven't implemented yet. I'm still trying to get details. I emailed both the, co the old coach and then his son, who's now the coach, and having her back. They partner their juniors, if I'm not mistaken, their incoming juniors, with an incoming freshman. So when the kid gets to the high school, he kind of knows someone, kind of, you know, there's a lot, we do a lot with mentoring with adults, talking to kids. I think there's definitely room for growth with our upperclassmen talking to our younger classmen. Uh, but as of yet, we have not implemented that. Um, I know the band has a curriculum where it's like embedded into their schedule. Um, at the high school, how does that work with our athletes? Is we it the band or the? It doesn't. It, it doesn't. There's no set curriculum that that's we don't, set. We don't have athletics right now is strictly extracurricular. That's across the board. Mm -hmm. So there's no curriculum out there that's. No, oh, this set. There's in a lot of. There's a couple places in Massachusetts that use phys ed for strength and conditioning with their athletes so kids can play more sports after school. So you have, you have uh, we have an enormous amount of kids at the high school, I think Mr. Cairo and Nick are both aware of this, that play two and three sports. They don't get to work out. You know, mo a lot of kids in this state play one sport, they maybe fiddle or dabble with another. Our kids are great. Our kids take every sport they play very seriously. They don't get to work out the way other kids do. You know, they have responsibilities. We have, you know, I was in the weight room today with a young man. He goes home. He's got to get his, he, has, he, gets, he gets his brother off the bus a couple times a week. You know, he's, you know, we have to understand that. You know, he's, why he, his mother will help him out during football. It's hard for him to do another sport and work out. And he has a 3.0 GPA. So he's a good student, he's a good kid. Uh, but as of right now, we don't have that. A lot of places do. So it's basically left up to the coaching staff yes. to put a, like a strength and conditioning program. We, yeah, the coaches handle it all. I mean, we work, you know, TB12 has come in, has helped a lot, especially in the, uh, in the summer and in the, in the uh, winter and the spring in terms of football, which is obviously what I'm most familiar with. I know that they're in the fall for track and, you know, soccer. Uh, and that's helped a lot. The kids like that. You know, it's, it's so TB12. You know, people try and work together. Like, I had the baseball team today. I'm not the baseball coach, but, uh, you know, Coach Brennan's the baseball coach. He's a friend of mine. I had the weight room open today. I had the workout for the baseball team that he put together. There's going to be days where, you know, we have the basketball kids in there because, you know, they have some time before practice. Um, but, yes, it's up to the coaching staff to sort of put together the strength and conditioning on days where TB12 is not available. I know when I went to West, we had a little, a little gym with weights. Is that... In every middle school, I'm assuming they all have a little weight room, or is that every just every middle school has a little space, yeah. A little space, so there's nothing. Uh, enough. Enough. Nothing, yeah, just enough. Most of the time, we roll out that that equipment into the gym itself per unit. Okay. Yeah. And, North has a pretty good space. They, they yeah, they we North did has a big space. We, um, we did a lock of them over. Yeah. We had that CrossFit grant. We had a grant. We actually took out a lot of unused lockers yeah. and 
crap and yeah, turn that into Mr. Wells tape. just sort of conquered the locker room at West and yeah. put up the, you know, he's got the old lap pull-down machine from the high he school. He's got some, some of the CrossFit so stuff, all the lockers that were in there. So it doubles yeah. as the football locker room in the fall, and then he can go in there with some of the kids and do some pretty good weightlifting with them a couple times a week. Nice. But, you know, it's, you know, I said this the last time we met. We have old buildings. We have old facilities. And I think every, I think, you know, speaking just from an athletic standpoint, and I, I think Kevin and Nick would agree with this, is there's a lot of stuff we'd like to do. We are hampered by space. Thank God we took the locker. What, what, what right. part of the locker room did we take to make the weight room double? Because that was a huge problem for years. Uh, the high school? Yeah. Took the, the wrestling side, moved, took a piece of the girls' locker room out, put the wrestling mat in there. Like that. That's great. The well, that doubled the space almost, right? Space, yeah. The weight room at the high school and the wrestling room, and the wrestling room that kind of grew out of the old oh, yeah. girls' locker room are the two best facilities we have in the entire school right. system. They're new, they're beautiful, they're state of the art, and they're, and they're as good as any public school you're going to yeah, see in, in the state. Too. And then we yeah. did that during COVID, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, the Masons did most of the. I mean, it's. Uh, they are. It's an impressive, that, impressive yeah, it really facility. Came out good. It and, really came out good. and there's enough stuff in there for, you know, every sports team. From, you know, it's, it's, it's the best thing we have in the school system. Other than the actual stadium itself, because of its size, I mean, it's the, probably the biggest draw we have. And there's a, in, in, as we're looking now at a new bus depot, um, we're also looking at space that would house where outside grounds works out of. Outside grounds now takes a pretty good portion of the field house at the high school where the locker rooms are. If you look, it's the, the first part of the, that building that's closest to the entrance by the rolling gate. Um, so our goal is once the city purchases us a bus depot that we would move them to that location and then athletics would take the rest, that whole section that outside grounds uses now would open up that whole space for the athletics. We don't have, and this is sort of unrelated, but we just, we don't have a lot of storage for anything. No. I mean, we find. I mean, that I think high school is the worst storage. It's just it's the, always. It's we, never had. They never built it for storage I ever. Have equipment all over the city. Never. <laughs> no, <laughs> Eddie, we found every nook and cranny. Everywhere. Boiler room at Central. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. We've got, our un, uh, we've got an unused closet in the basement that hides all the BBC basket. Uh, the uh, Brock the BCB basketball stuff. Uh, we have a storage container uh, outside that has all the freshman football equipment, the lacrosse equipment from West Middle School when they had a team eight, nine years ago, plus all random odds and ends. There's another storage container that's half store, half softball, half brocked and half to die. Well, we have so many of those ugly storage and containers. A, we and just the, don't have space in the building. When they build schools, they just don't. I brought pallets the down into the basement west because it gets water, and that's where all the middle school football equipment is. Today, is it's all up on pallets, so it doesn't get soaked and doesn't right. get covered in mold. And it's the, it was pretty much the only unused, and I don't think a lot of people knew it existed because it was. Oh, the place down there. I remember yeah, the old, down there. The the old book room. Yeah. Which was actually the, a bunch of voting ballots got ruined in the flood. The that great was, floods that's, of that's the other side. That was when Mr. Jerome went down there in 2011 or 2012, yeah. and came back up and ordered a hazmat team and yeah. to go in and remove everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I lost oh. all my national because there's two sides. All the middle schools have uh, basements. At West, probably I don't even think. Nick, you went to I West. I didn't know what was there. Me either. There were so classrooms I, down there. When you said that you yeah. stored stuff down there, I didn't know it existed. Me either until it, I went yeah. with John that time after the flood. I went, that was the book room when I started teaching there. So that was, there were books from teachers from the 1950s down there. I found a scrapbook from West down there from the year the school opened. I gave it to someone I have no, I wish I had it back because it was pretty cool to look yeah. at. 
but that, everything down the SB on pallets. Everything is floods. it just gets wet, but it's the biggest room in the school system not being used, and I, I sort of laid claim to it. I just kind of started putting stuff in it and didn't leave. Yeah. On the uh, too scared to go down. There. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> I brought Mr. Kenny down there today. It's quite the place. Little, I was a little worried about him. Something like you there. see in a horror movie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a nice place. <laughs> no. I know, I mean, uh, I should ask this when Kevin was up here. So we don't have a full-time strength and conditioning coach. So it's fair to say that that's something that we should explore um, to work with all of our athletes. Some yeah, we would have to, and then you could use the person um, during, like you could schedule a class and get more kids out of studies and give, like you can give preference to students and you could have a class. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to, he'd be a regular scheduled teacher, mm -hmm. um, but you would have to do it so kids would schedule it so they have it. Um, and make it part of an elective. Yes. We'll work on that. Any other questions from any of the other members? Thank you, Matt, for your thank time. You. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the, uh, the department heads here for making their presentation um, for music, arts, athletics. Um, we see there's a grave need with our facilities. And uh, Kevin and Mike, I mean, I've seen on the work that's been worked on with our fields. Um, can't wait till January when everything is uh, drafted up and we can go in front of the council and propose it. Um, and it's not just for the, uh, for the students, but it's also for the community. Right. Uh, it's a big investment in our infrastructure. And uh, we, we can have to turn, around, turn away a lot of adult uh, who should have access to obviously playing activities in the city. Um, so, unfortunately, the only turf field is high school. We have to turn away a lot of adult soccer, f uh, football. We do our best to fit everybody in, but we can't accommodate everybody on one field. Because their sports are the same as the high school sports. So, you fit them in late at night. You fit them in on Sundays. It's just, um, it's, and it's again, like Tony said, it's, it's not just for the students. It's for the entire community. Thank you. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Motion to adjourn by, by Kathy. <laughs> Property second by Jared. Show of hands. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>